Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. But see, no matter what God chooses you for, if you won't believe it, then it'll never happen. So you have to stop looking at yourself the way the world views you, and you have to start seeing yourself the way God sees you. God so strongly put it on my heart to teach tonight that adventure is not always stepping out into something new. Many times it's letting go of something old. And I feel so strongly about it that I believe that there may be more of you here that need that. I really do. And sometimes the things you have to let go of, they're, they're not things that you hate and would love to let go of. A lot of times they're things that you want to keep doing. <laughs> But you can't do everything and do it all good. <laughs> I asked my trainer, because I work out three times a week and I have now for 14 years. I wish I would have started earlier in life, but thank God I got started when I did. And, you know, the thing that really provoked me to start working out, well, first of all, I took a good look at myself one day in the mirror. <laughs> Not fully clothed, forget that vision. <laughs> And all the stuff that used to be up here was down there. <laughs> And I thought, oh, God, I'm in trouble. And I really felt like the Lord said to me, if you want to finish the last third of your journey and fully complete what I've given you to do, then you got to start, you got to start exercising on a regular basis. Now, I'm not trying to get you to do that. I'm just telling you what he told me. And I started doing that over 14 years ago. And I asked my trainer recently, I said, so... If I keep doing what I'm doing, when I'm 90 years old, will I still be able to do it? And he said, no. <laughs> I said, well, why not? He said, because you'll be 90 years old. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you'll still be able to work out, but you won't be lifting as heavy a weights as you do now. You might have to do less reps. There might be some exercises you can't do anymore. And you know what? When you're strong and you're like a bulldog and you, you know, I've spent my life pressing through things and pushing through things. And starting with when my dad was sexually abusing me and deciding I am going to do something with my life. I got so tired of him telling me that I was never going to amount to anything, and I decided one day, I am going to prove you wrong. <laughs> But I really believe that some of you, the biggest adventure that you could possibly have is to let go of something that's no longer bearing fruit in your life or perhaps never has borne any fruit in your life. You don't even know why you're doing it. You're just kind of addicted to it. And you just can't imagine not doing it. Well, can I tell you something? God always makes you let go of something before he lets you take hold of something new. You're foolish if you think you can always do what you've always done. Life is a journey. And things are anointed for a season. And friendships are anointed many times for a season. I have people that were very good friends of mine 20 years ago that I never hear from now. And they don't hear from me. Everything is beautiful in its time. You say, well, how do I know if God's done with something? Oh, you know. If you're honest with yourself, you know. <laughs> Being honest with ourselves is not always easy, right? 
Well, I'm still on page one. I have a problem here. <laughs> it's nothing new. <laughs> what happens actually is I end up preaching it all. I just do it backwards and upside down. And <laughs> Philippians 3.3, 3, put no confidence in the flesh, but only in Christ Jesus. Don't be conformed to this world. Proverbs 3.26, for the Lord will be your confidence and he will keep your foot from being caught. Now, 1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 31. I have to try to help some of you stop discounting yourself and thinking that because you're not super smart, God can't use you or you don't have the right education or the right friends or, you know, nobody to help you or, or whatever, whatever it is the devil tells you. God doesn't choose people that the world would choose. Matter of fact, he chooses, in these scriptures it says, God chooses what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. And God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. He chooses people who know they don't have it all together and know that if God doesn't show up, they're done for. So all the people in the world who can't figure out why in the world God is using you have to watch him do it God chose what is low and despised in the world, even the things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are. Why? So that no human being might boast in the presence of God. Do you know out of all the disciples, there was only one of them that the world would have approved of, and that was Judas. He was very well educated, had it all together, spoke well. I mean, Peter, no way. <laughs> Maybe Luke, he was a doctor. But most of the disciples that Jesus chose, and he didn't just get stuck with them, the Bible says that he prayed all night before he chose them. <laughs> but see, no matter what God chooses you for, if you won't believe it, then it'll never happen. So you have to stop looking at yourself the way the world views you, and you have to start seeing yourself the way God sees you. And I can tell you, I don't care who you are, if God calls you to do something, you may not have one natural qualification, but you know what qualifies you? God's anointing. And we talk so little about the anointing now, I don't even know how many people really even know what it is. The anointing is when the presence of God comes on you and enables you to do something. The Bible says that when Saul, King Saul, when the anointing of the Holy Spirit came on him, he was turned into another man. And I love that. You know, I never knew I was funny till I started preaching. Nobody would have thought I was funny. And people just laugh all the time. And I'll tell you the truth, I know that it's the Holy Spirit. I know that. He can cause you to do things you would never do, say things you don't even know. Is anybody listening to me? Yeah. You're not, you're not going to be excited about your life if all you ever do is what you want to do. <laughs> or what you think you can do or what your friends think you can do. The only way you're ever gonna be excited about your life is to start doing what you really believe that God wants you to do and what's in your heart to do. Follow your heart. That's one of the things that Jesus died to buy you is the right to follow your heart. Come on. God does not choose you because of your education, your skills, your experience, or your capabilities. He chooses you because you're available 
I always like to say, God doesn't choose you because of ability, but because of availability. You know, I really, I really hope and pray that every person in here, see, I, I, there's something in my heart that I want to see happen, and it'll have to happen after you go home. It's not a matter of it happening right in here. It's got to happen when you go home. And I want to see every single one of you make a decision that you want to do something for God. Well, I'm glad you're so excited about that. <laughs> see, and a lot of you are thinking, well, what could I do? Well, that's the problem. You'd be amazed what you could do. All you have to do is say what Isaiah did. Here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I, send me. You're not too young and you're not too old. And what you do will not be insignificant. I think I started to tell you a while ago that one of my daughters came at just the right time when I was basically saying, I need more help. But it was more like personal help that I needed, so it had to be the right person. I mean, you can't write 125 books and keep up with all the other, the grocery list and the, you know, all the other things that, I mean, you, you just can't. And God provides what you need if you're doing what he's asking you to do. And she said, I really believe at this time in my life, the call of God on my life is to help you. And so, she's a helper. Well, you know, maybe people don't clap for her, but I call her the momager. She manages mom. <laughs> Amen? And she sacrifices so much of her time. And yes, I bless her and I help her and I do things for her, but there's no way that she could do for me what she does. She's got four kids of her own. Now, they're, two of them are gone from home, and the other two are, one's in college and one's in her last year of high school, so it's not like they need constant care. But she just does so much for me. And can I tell you something? The people who do those kinds of things for me, honestly, I can tell you they are some of the most important people in my life. And so if you're one of those people that's called to just help somebody else, God bless you. And just do it. And do it with all your heart. And don't ever say, well, I'm just a helper. <laughs> or I just clean homes. I'm glad somebody cleans homes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> How many of you are glad somebody cleans homes? <laughs> Stop discounting yourself and stop belittling yourself. And, and I'm just a wife and a mother. My gosh, that's one of the highest callings. Man, if you can raise a house full of kids today and stay sane, God bless you. <laughs> Problems created when your confidence has been stolen. And you know what confidence is? It's just a belief. It's not a feeling. I don't always feel confident when I come up here. I don't always even feel when I'm done like my preaching was good. I usually do, but I don't always. And I had one of those a few weeks ago where I just thought, that was the biggest mess I've ever seen in my life. And I told Dave, I said, oh, there's nothing worse for me than preaching and just feeling like it just wasn't good. Anybody else in here that teaches or preaches ever feel that way? You're just like, it just wasn't good. And I rarely do this, but I had them send me a copy of it. And I watched it, and you know what? It was really good. <laughs> the devil was just messing with me that night. And he loves to make you feel like whatever you are doing is no good. 
So confidence is not a feeling. You don't always feel that. Oh. You know? But it's a possession. It's something that Jesus died to give you. He doesn't want you to be ruled by fear. He wants you to be confident. And he wants you to be able to step out and to do things. And to do things maybe that nobody's ever done. And he wants you to be so confident in him that even if you do lose a few friends, that you can trust him to say, well, maybe they were just excess baggage in my life and not who I really needed anyway. I mean, if people aren't going to love you for you, come on, are we getting anything? Well, here's just a handful of problems that's created when you don't have any confidence. Number one, your potential in Christ is never reached. Fear rules you, and you live in regret about all the things you wish you would have done, but were afraid to do. I think the saddest thing in the whole world is to look at an older person. I mean, somebody, you know, 70, 80 years old, and all they have left is regret. That's just heartbreaking. I wish I would have. Don't die wishing you would have. Don't die with all your potential still locked up on the inside of you. I want every person to leave this, con this conference saying, God, I want to do something for you. Show me what I can do. And it, it, it probably won't be a platform ministry. You may not go to Hollywood and become a movie star. <laughs> you maybe won't be the next Natalie Grant. But you can do something. Come on, there's something you can do. I honestly cannot even imagine how it would change the world and how fast it would change the world. How people would admire the church and admire believers and our churches would be packed. You, you, you would not be able to get all the people in any church if Christians were actually just being kind to neighbors and helping the elderly person next door and picking up that employee that, whose engine blew out of their car and they can't, can't afford to get it fixed. And oh, by the way, it's an employee that really has mistreated you. But what does it say to them in the world if you offer to go pick them up, go out of your way and pick them up every day for six months? Love is more than a word. And it takes confidence to love some people. Stop thinking that what you can do or what you can give is too little to even mess with. You know how I started working out? Because I always had the same excuse that everybody does, I don't have time. As much as I travel, there's no way that I can do it and do it on a regular basis. And finally, this, this was what pushed me over the edge in addition to what God said to me. The thing that pushed me over the edge was I decided... And if you'll decide this, things will start changing your life. I decided I'm going to stop worrying about what I can't do, and I'm going to do what I can do. Even if I can only work out 15 minutes once a week, I'm going to do what I can do. And you know what? That, that kind of like jump starts things. And so you do a little something, and then you, you, then I started liking it. And when I started being able to wear smaller clothes, <laughs> I really liked it. <laughs> Come on. And I really like it now when somebody says to me, you're really in good shape for somebody 75 years old. <laughs> I like it. And it keeps me going back. You see, first you invest. Now listen, first you invest 
and eventually. <laughs> After some long suffering. <laughs> Come on, you know what I mean by that? When I started working out, I was so sore, I had to fall on the toilet and pray to be able to get up. Oh my gosh, I thought I was gonna die. I mean, and my, and my, my trainer said, some days you're gonna feel downright sick, and I did. First you invest, then you wait, then you get a reward. First you invest, then you wait, then you get a reward. I'm gonna finish this up and let you guys get some sleep. You won't sleep anyway, but. <laughs> if you don't live with confidence, you will never know full joy, never. And one of the worst things, I think, is the Holy Spirit is grieved because he's in you to help you be all you can be. And then the door is open for many kinds of torment. I had a whole section here on the fear of failure, which I can't get to, but I think you get the point anyway. How many of you got the point tonight? All right. How many of you are ready to say, here I am, God, send me? Yeah. Now, do you mean it? Because if you say it, this is one of those you can't take it back things. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna pray. Father, I didn't see any hands down. So that means you got a lot of new workers. New people that want to do what you want them to do. And so I pray that you will give everybody in here an assignment of some kind. And if it doesn't come right away, if they don't know what it is right away, then don't let them get frustrated waiting. Show us daily what you want us to do, as well as giving us our life mission. Help us be bold enough to step out and follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit and to be confident even when we don't feel confident. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, breaking free from whatever's holding you back can be frightening. But if you put your confidence in God, not yourself, you will find victory. They know what abuse is. They know what trauma is. They know what it is to struggle with identity. They know what it is to face conflict in their lives. They know what it is to struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness. And Joyce's story and her experience is so particularly relevant to them because they understand that, hey, this lady knows my context. I, I, I might not be able to speak her language. I might not be able to understand her country or her, her culture. But she knows my language of pain and abuse and hurt. And her testimony in their lives gives them hope for their own lives. If, if it can happen for that lady, it could happen for me. Thank you.
Being committed is very important. Mobile phones being used by almost everyone on the continent. In fact, there are more mobile phones on the continent of Africa than there are people at the moment. Uh, so this is a really exciting platform and people are accessing the internet, well over 85% of people, uh, through their mobile phones first. So we've got several pages recently that have been opened up in Nigeria, uh, several that have been opened up in Ethiopia, several in uh, uh, Kenya as well, and we're getting exciting responses from that. So it's one way that we can communicate directly to people uh, on a regular basis, but at the same time where there are physical needs, we respond particularly to those through feeding programs and water wells and anti-human trafficking work and skills development programs for young girls that prevent them from being sold into child marriage and secure their education for the rest of high school. I think for me, the thing that really touches my heart is in the midst of all the numbers, because we do, we work with some uh, crazy numbers and I think we get blown away uh, listening to some of the reach of people. Um, I mean, you know, the millions and the thousands and the hundreds of thousands, those figures that come back. Uh, what always catches me off guard a little bit and gets me uh, overwhelmed is when you have those one-on-one -on -one encounters with people and each and every one of them has a unique story, each and every one of them uh, has a unique uh, set of challenges that they've got to overcome, a unique set of pain. Uh, but God's particular love for each individual in each country, in each culture, in each language is what blows me away. Well, have you ever wanted to help hurting people, but you feel like you can't make a difference? I want you to know that you can. When we work together, we can feed hungry children, rescue women from human trafficking, and help victims of natural disasters. Uh, that's just few of the things that we can do. And I'm asking you, if you're not a partner with our ministry, I'm asking you to partner with us, to become a financial partner with the ministry. And that means that you do something on a regular basis, monthly or, or quarterly, but we need people all over the world helping us so we can keep reaching hurting people. And honestly and truly, what each one of us can do by ourselves is minute compared to what we can do if we put it all together. And so I'm inviting you to join the family today and make an amazing difference all over the world for God's glory. You can be a world changer. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek. Door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl/shop. Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse inspiratie? Inspirerende gedachten levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan.